Uh, no one said it's his fault, says QB. I'm assuming that's Quinlan, right? Uh, we are saying that he hasn't been good enough recently, but tonight he looked great, and hopefully that continues. Okay, but look, okay, look. First of all, let's clarify what I mean by someone's fault, all right? Someone's fault is strategically, over the course of a play, whoever made the mistake that is so big that it kind of undoes everyone else's hard work, okay? So that's what I mean by fault. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. doesn't even mean they're a bad player. Great players have blame. Great players have things go wrong that are their fault. So what? You get over it, right? You get over it. Um, if it's happening consistently, that's a different story. But everyone, everyone, hockey is a game of mistakes. More mistakes happen than good things. Every minute of that game, more mistakes are happening than, su than successes. All right? But that's how they it's how they respond, it's how they evolve and everything like that. So before we get into anything else like that, let's just clarify that's what I mean by fault. Okay. So to say that his numbers uh we're saying he hasn't been good enough recently, right? That's because you're using numbers to say that he's not good enough recently, right? That's what you're saying. And I'm saying has nothing to do with him. That's not even a reflection of his numbers. And if they're showing up in his numbers, then you're not doing a good enough job of separating separating uh, his performance from the rest of the team. Because so many of the goals in the past month, so many of the goals have been a complete and utter defensive breakdown. And you can tell me that the Leafs are statistically higher in defense than most of the league. I believe that's true. You can quote me on that again later. Uh, you can look that if, if I'm wrong. Okay, I apologize. But I believe defensively, right, Toronto's pretty high in the statistics. And that's fine because you guys are measuring again some sort of average, some sort of some sort of curve, some sort of whatever, right? And you're looking at data that's got points all over the place as well, okay? And yeah, when the Leafs are doing great, they crush people. They crush people when they're doing well at their like at their best and stuff, right? But it doesn't matter if when they do something bad, it is so bad that it's like pulling the goalie. And a lot of the goals, especially the ones from yesterday, I can't stress this enough. The ones from yesterday, so many of them are just complete and utter defensive breakdowns. No one can be expected to save that. You know what I mean? And yet people are saying that it's his, that he's that he's he's not playing as well. He's playing just fine. He's playing the same he always has. It's just it didn't go his way because his teammates collapsed in front of him. So if the numbers aren't showing that, I'm sorry. I disagree with the numbers then. I don't care what the... I can show you tape. I can show you physical video proof of the things I'm talking about. Sticks being pinned instead of lift, right? Bodies being stationary in front of our net instead of moving them out of the way or at least jockeying for position, right? Still bodies in front of the net. Can't happen. I can show you all kinds of proof of the things that I'm seeing that 100% have contributed to the losses that they've had and a lot of the goals against. And just because other elite goalies can cover up for those mistakes better than Jack Campbell doesn't mean that Jack Campbell should have to save them. You see what I'm saying? So other good teams, right? They might have a really good goalie too that doesn't let as many of those go in. That's great. You want a guy like that, honestly. I get it. If you had your choice, you choose the one that can cover up mistakes the best. But it doesn't mean they should have to, right? There are things that the Leafs are doing structurally wrong in front of their goalies for the past couple of years, to be honest. I've got videos on it before too. For the past couple of years, they get sloppy at times. And they let bad, weak stuff happen in front of the net. No better example than the uh no better example than the Montreal series. That's how that series got away from them. A complete lack of coverage in front of their own net, protecting their goalies. You know what I mean? So let Lamb Chops as well, hello. Uh, and yes, I'm glad you're here as well, too. And yeah, I'm honestly glad that uh, Quinlan showed up. We were talking, I, I invited him to come out tonight because we like to talk stats in the chat, right? And uh, love going back and forth with this stuff. I really do, right? I'm really trying to get to the bottom of it. I want to believe. I like that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is me hoping that aliens exist, right? Except all the proof of aliens I'm being handed to, I'm just looking at it going like, this is wrong somehow. It just is. And I don't, I'm not smart enough with math. I'm not smart enough with math to figure out how it's wrong. But I can tell you instinctually based on what I see in the game, it's wrong, man. At times, at times it's wrong. That last goal against that one goal tonight against uh, Campbell, that one goal tonight, that's a perfect example of a good goal. That is a good goal. Right? Hughes streaks in along the side, right? He's got a man in front. Riley 
could have pushed up a little bit more, but to be honest, it's a seven nothing lead. Like you don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to take too many chances. So I probably would have done the same thing if I were him. It, it wasn't like Hughes was in a danger zone of any kind, really. He's still pretty far back. You know what I mean? And 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 he looks like he's going straight into like three leafs. So it's like, what are the chances he's gonna shoot there? I get it. I probably would have been on my heels too a little bit. So Quinn takes advantage, fires a shot. Riley happens to be screening Campbell, right? Riley's totally screening Campbell there. And that's fine, right? It happens sometimes. And it's better to happen when you're up 7-0 than when you're, you know, down one nothing trying to get back into the game. So, uh, you know, like, I, I still don't even think the goal tonight was his fault. Like, <laughs> and I think a lot of people are going to agree with me on that, but they're going to agree with me because they won. Whereas if they lost one nothing because of that goal, people would be calling for Campbell's head already. That's what I think. Um, the stats show a decline in the Leafs' defensive play, but they also show a decline in Campbell's play. Okay, so what's causing the other? See what I'm saying? What is causing the other? Is Campbell causing the defense to collapse, or do you think defense is having an effect on Campbell? Right? Like, we all agree that stats are affected by, the, by, the, by your surroundings. They have to be. That's why all winning teams have the majority of their players in the plus range. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean every single one of them is a superstar that deserves to be getting a plus rating for the season. It means their team as a whole is having a lot of success. And teams like Arizona have like three players in the plus. That's about it. You know what I mean? Does that mean every player in the minus sucks? No, it means that as a team, as a whole, they're having a horrible, horrible season, right? If I am Campbell, right? And I'm facing way more shots because my defense sucks and my number is the same as a goalie, who's got the same numbers as me, but his team is defensively number one in the league. That's not the same thing. No matter how, no matter how you try to isolate the goalie, you can't, you can't isolate the goalie. Cause is it, is a goalie more confident playing on a team where he's just getting hung out to dry? Or is a goalie more confident when he's on a team where everyone's playing perfect defense in front of him? How do you separate that? How do you separate that? Right? You can't separate uh, a team bond you can't separate confidence from being on a winning team being on a defensive team yes okay but you're saying he's allowing more goals than it's than expected goals right that's what makes it on him but what i'm saying is a team playing badly defensively in front of you is going to have an effect on you so your stats individually will still tank as well you're a goalie, man. You're not a god, right? You're not inhuman. You're not a robot. If you're facing more dangerous opportunities, your body's going to get more tired. If your body gets more tired, you can't perform at your best. You can't perform at your best. You don't make a save that you routinely save. And people point at it and go, ha, look, he always saves that. Why is he not saving it now? Something's wrong with him. Yeah, he's tired from having to bail his team out in front of him. You know what I mean? He's tired of having to deal with dangerous opportunities he shouldn't have to deal with that great example is the third goal uh, uh from last night the third goal from new jersey okay he arguably should have had that goal that's the one out of the three that i'm like yeah you could say he probably should have had it right because technically dermot's making a, a slide attempt to block a pass he's supposed to be focused on the shot only but it was a weak slide man he's already out of position that pass is still wide open and because campbell's smart he knows that that pass is still wide open he's trying to calculate it and say Oh, now that guy is too sharp. He's not going to shoot from there. So as soon as the puck started to leave his stick, Campbell went down to try and block a pass, kind of. And he shouldn't have, because the guy actually did have the guts to shoot from that angle. Smart of him. It was a smart play. He shot it. Campbell couldn't handle it. Short side. In she goes. You know what I mean? And that, that gets seen as, oh, Campbell should have had that shot. That's a routine thing that goalies are supposed to have, right? Yeah, but goalies don't always deal with botched two-on-ones. Re repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly having to jump across the net to save it yet again because my guys in front can't block a pass to save their lives. So that has an effect on you. And there's no, there's no mathematical way to separate that. I'm telling you, you guys are wasting your time. You're wasting your time trying to separate. Okay, we have to, to progress st statistically, we have to incorporate the room for, the, for your surroundings. Okay? There's too much going on out there. We have to incorporate that data into part of what we're doing, right? There has to be some wiggle room. I'm telling you. Um, hopefully this is making sense. We're talking about going into a statistical 
advancement of, of, of obscurity. We have to deal with unknown. We can't just we can't just eliminate it because we don't understand it. It's there. It's there. Intangibles are there. Team bonding is there, right? Mental well-being is there. Diet, you know what I mean? Healthcare is there. It's all in the performance. It's all there. You know what I mean? It's all there. Now you might say that my methods of finding the intangibles are completely off base. Honestly, could be, could be, right? Could be. There's probably something so much better than what I'm trying to do. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot down in my basement. But what we're doing with this whole trying to isolate, oh, this is this one player's success compared to all of his team. Like we did it, man. We we we, we ruled out all the ways that his team affected him, and we got right down to the part that's just him. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know what I mean? Some guy's picking on you at practice every day. That has an effect on you. That's your teammate having an effect on you. Right? If, if, if teams are better as a unit, as a whole, individuals will be better as a whole. And when a team is struggling as a team, individual numbers will always struggle as a team. Doesn't mean that they're bad necessarily. It means they're not succeeding. They're not having success. Like, I hope I'm making sense here, Quinlan. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's hard for me to chat all this when we're doing uh, comments and stuff. I hope, I hope I haven't made you leave. Like, I swear to God, I'm having fun with this. Uh, and I don't think you're an idiot. I don't think you're an idiot for having the opinions you do. You know what I mean? I, I, I see. I see the logic behind what they're doing with analytics. It makes sense to me. The theory behind it. I'm saying it's not executed the way they think it is. It's not. What we have is something much closer than we've ever had before. Just like just like the NHL games. Each NHL game is the best one that has ever existed. Doesn't mean it's perfect yet. Doesn't mean it's perfect yet. That's analytics, okay? Analytics is cuz it's numbers too, right? Just like just like gaming code. You're limited by the numbers, but the numbers keep getting more intricate year after year after year, making a better and better product. A better and better product. We may never get. We mean. We we never get to perfection. Hey, Canada Delorean. Hey, how you doing? I love your account, man, on Instagram. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for following along, man. Thanks for following along. So we may never get to that analytical perfection, but I agree that it should be. It should be attempted. Why not? Why not? You know what I mean? Something as silly as sports, we're going to try and break this down with math and try and get the edge on everybody. Yeah, let's do it. I love it. I love it. So I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're asking questions. And if I get snappy, it's just because I'm passionate about it. But I'm not snappy at you, man. I'm really happy that you're here. It means a lot to me that you're here. And I hope, honestly, I hope that you've got other people that like analytics and you like talking sports. And I hope that you'll feel welcome to bring them too. Right? I hope you feel welcome to bring them too and be a part of this. We like the debate. It can be fun, man. It can be fun. So uh, I see you're saying, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, or you can see at least what I'm trying to get at. Right. So that's where I'm at. I hope you understand now, Quinlan, that like my approach to the math is my way of trying to attempt the abstract idea and concept of finding the intangibles, incorporating the external factors, not not isolating them because it can't be done. I'm trying to incorporate them somehow and find a way to get math that shows that. Right. And all I know is that my methods might be completely wrong, but they're no better at trying to do that. The thing I'm saying, they're no better at trying to do that than any advanced analytics right now. They're just not. They're just not. And I don't think that analytics people would argue with me on that because it's not It's not meant to try and get uh, abstract ideas. It's meant to try and get the most concrete, solid evidence you can make for any kind of case, right? You want to make a case? There's solid numbers there that could probably help you out if you know what you're talking about. So, like, I, I love it. I love the idea of going for it. So, let's please keep going for it. Invite people to come around here, right? 